<clears throat> and now for some completely different. Today, we're gonna talk why players should not be copying pro players. Professional Stinger 321. <laughs> ah, yes, this is gonna be the topic for today's Lotus Lab. Thank you for tuning in. Something that really pisses me off. You're gonna hear, like, I, I get a lot of questions in the chat when I stream, like, what do you think about this crosser? What do you think about this graphical setting? What do you think about stretch res? What do you think about, you know, playing like this and playing like that and so on? And the thing is that many people want to just copy paste something that was developed by a different player, right? We're gonna talk about specifics in a moment, and apply to their own game. But they will not think about these first steps to apply, uh, sorry, which, which like will result in a specific play, right? Or specific decision-making. So they want to do the outcome without doing the first ingredient that will result in the outcome. It's like getting a recipe for, I don't know, a cake and using different ingredients or not using any ingredients and expecting a cake, you know? And we talk about here, like, you know, players copying tensors crossers, um, copying uh, uh, resolutions from players, like all of that stuff is not really that important, right? But then even worse is when players are copying the exact type of movement and decision making and like positioning from pro players who are just so much better than the rest of the, of the population that you typically shouldn't be even doing what they are doing. And why? Think about it this way. For example, let's let's take tens. Imagine now that this is this is a edited video and there's a tens figure right now here, like on a thumbnail. And so the thing is, tens has insane aim, right? Better than 99.99 percent of the population. So when someone watches the stream and sees his uh, the way he plays the game, and he thinks like, oh, I need to copy that and apply this to my own game style right, playstyle, it's not going to be effective because a lot of the movement, the positions that Tens is taking and the way that he plays the game is being dictated by his aim. Why? Because he's making different, more um, risky decision-making because he plays like a Jet Reyna Chamber or something like that and has a is able to play an off-angle, go for a nasty headshot and then bail himself out and even if he doesn't have the same utility to bail himself out just because of the insane aim he cannot be punished every time because he's just so much better than everyone else if you're just gonna copy the same things that tense is doing you're gonna end up dead in most of the cases and if you're playing chamber and you just you're gonna end up with missing the bullet and just tipping out and be like oh unlucky you know i should have had a nats crosser to hit that shot because that's like the mindset that people have. They don't want to develop their own playstyle. They don't want to understand that everyone is unique. You know, you have like categories. When you think about Valorant, you have agents, of course, right? And everyone's like, well, if you're a duelist, you need to go first and so on. Which also, by the way, doesn't apply to every single duelist, but we're gonna, that's another topic for a video. I have like a spreadsheet with, with characters. Um, but when it comes to like developing an understanding of the game, the first and most important aspect of the game is your own playstyle. Are you a lurker? Are you a support player? Are you a rifler? Are you a sniper? Uh, do you like to be secondary entry? Do you like maybe to play smokes or, you know, whatever is your um, preferred role, right? And then when you have that preferred role a little bit developed and you know what you like to play, you're going to supplement that with a specific agent. And... If you're just gonna copy something like carbon copy, control C, control V from a pro player that I have seen, not only you might be out of your comfort zone, right? From a player that has completely different playstyle from you, you will not understand the big picture of what he wants to achieve in the game. Because many things that players are doing, you can see that, for example, in Nats, where he has setups, where he has uh, you know utility that conditions players, conditions opponents, he is overarching few rounds. To have an outcome five five rounds later it's like predicting what is going to happen in chess you know and you're going to have that a lot with viper you're going to have a lot of that with killjoy with cypher with yoru uh with breach as well you're going to condition people to ex to to an setup of utility that you use and you can play around that because of that so uh just blindly copying 
setups or blindly copying behavior of a pro player makes no sense. It's going to hurt you more than not doing that, right? It's very important to understand when you want to watch someone who is a professional player in Valorant, I think what you need to ask yourself is why is that person, that player, doing what he is doing right now in the round and understand why did he that get that to the uh, get to that decision in the first place? Because then you will understand decision making as a process and not as an outcome. And I think that's the most important in understanding a pro player's mind and developing your own decision making. Because you can be like, ah, okay, now he did this with his utility because he wants to do that, and then the previous round he did this because he did it. He did it. Uh, he did to like you know bait something else, and that will be. A learning process for you. Just blindly copying moves will not work typically, right? And remember, mechanically speaking, 99%, they are just so much better than you that you're not going to be able to copy the, the way they play anyway, right? And the second thing, second, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, the, my pet peeve, pet peeve, pet peeve, I'm not a native speaker, but it's like what annoys me, right? Is the graphical settings, in Valorant, um, okay, let's actually scratch back. Let's go to CS. In CS, the reason why players were using a 4-3 resolution and the stretch and so on was, was first and foremost because back in the 90s, we only had square monitors. There was no 16-9. So most of the pro players that started the same age that I did, right, I'm I'm old. I'm 37 years old. I was actually playing with a lot of pro players that had a career in CS starting in 1.6, essentially. And, I, and we all played on the same hardware. It was pretty damn shit. It was like office hardware because there was no gaming stuff back then, right? So you had this habit of, of, of playing on a 4v3 monitor that was just square. So when first LED monitors 16 or 9 were appearing, by the way, they were garbage and no one wanted to play on them right? Because they had insane input delay. But when they started getting better, players just wanted to mimic or like essentially bring back what they already had been accustomed to for so many years and bring it to this new technology. So they literally just took that graphic and put it on the monitor. And then they realized, well, if we can stretch it, well, then the head is bigger. The hitbox is the same. They're actually moving faster. And your sensitivity has different correlation because when your screen is stretched, you have different left-right than up-down. Sorry, Mike. Which is not good for non-pro players because you're going to build up really bad habits when it comes to like your muscle memory in in if you were going to change anything at some point in your graphical settings. And then you can still see a turn in tournaments. I don't really watch many, uh, many CSGO tournaments, right? Or not, not at all right now. But when I was watching it, like, every tournament, there was at least one round when someone lost because he was playing 4v3 stretched, 4v3 four, four stretched, and he didn't see the left and the right side of the monitor, right? So that's an actual disadvantage at using a stretched resolution in CSGO, but players are so accustomed to playing that, that they're just adamant about not changing it. While the players that are watching pro players are copying because pro players using it when it makes no sense. Native resolutions like are working great. You have more crispy um, screen. If you have good hardware, you're not you don't you don't have to use worse resolution because of the low FPS or something, right? Because that's a valid point. If you have really bad hardware and using a lower resolution will result in more FPS, that makes sense. But what you will achieve with um, you know, if you have problems with vision on a full resolution, you just sit closer to the monitor. It's like, don't disadvantage yourself while using stretched, right? But in Valorant, there's no, no, there's no even stretched. The only thing that you achieve with the stretch is you, you actually stretch the HUD. But that's the only thing. So if you want to use stretched, you have to ask yourself, well, hmm, do I want my crosser to be like a little bit fatter left, right? Because that's the only thing that will like change. But it will make your game just look worse as well. And you will not gain you any FPS because the thing is with Unreal, with Unreal Engine that Valorant is working on, 
most of its FPS are coming from the CPU and the RAM speed, not the GPU. So by changing the graphical settings, you're not really unburdening the graphical uh, card and that doesn't result in many FPS difference. In my case, for example, I have a good PC, but when I use a 2K resolution or 1080p resolution, the FPS are literally the same, you know? So, uh, yeah, um, that's one of the things. That's one of the things that people are just blindly copying and not achieving anything with it while they think it makes an impact. While they actually, in CS, they shoot themselves in the foot because they don't see the left and the right of the screen, which is awful. Peripheral vision in FPS games is very important. Think about it this way. Why on earth, in every single FPS game where you have FOV settings, pro players are setting it to the maximum? Then why on earth in CS are they limiting the FOV? It just makes no sense, right? So, the only, you know, this is just force of habit, placebo, and, uh, you know, it is bigger. <laughs> I hate this argument. So, yeah, um, when it comes to keybinds as well, if you copy keybinds from a pro player, I think there are some games where it matters. For example, in Fortnite, actual keybinds are were imperative to being efficient in the game because it, Fortnite is so skill intensive when it comes to inputs on the keybar on the keyboard that having decently put keybinds for your fingers matters a lot because the milliseconds are ramping up and they are not making your wrist wrist hurt if the keybinds are good. But in games like CS, Valorant, um Probably Rainbow Six Siege. I don't really know much about Rainbow Six Siege, but I would assume so. Those keybinds don't really matter. Like, it, it, it really doesn't change anything, you know? Like, I have my own settings. I have a reload on C. I crouch on space, you know? But it's not like in Quake, where people didn't have fire on, on their mouse. They actually had fire on, on their space bar because they didn't want to move the mouse with an additional, like, let's say, force from the fingers. Because on the mouse one... On the mouse, oh, nice, nice mouse, nice mouse. Uh, on the mouse, the, the mouse one button was actually forward. In games that where the where the input actually matters, that's important. But CS and Valorant are not that games. Copying keybinds will not give you almost any advantage. Do what is what makes sense for you. Look at the keybinds from the pro player and think about it. Well, why does he have the keybinds there? Why, for example? I myself have a, I'm not a pro player, by the way, but not in Valorant, but um, why do I have my main gun on three instead of one? Everyone has the main gun on one, but I have on three because I find it more, um, it, it, I find it myself more comfortable to press three fast than press fast one, right? That's like one of the, um, one, one of these settings that makes sense for me, but maybe not for other players, right? So blindly copying that setting will probably not do anything for you, but just confuse you, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's about it, I would say. I just wanted to rant a little bit because it's... it's Oh, one more! Oh my god, I would forget! Raw Axel. That thing pisses me more than stretch resolution. I had dozens of people in my stream ask me, what do I think about raw Axel? Do I know anyone who's using raw Axel? Acceleration in the mouse is something that in the first place, none of the pro players ever, had, uh, ever wanted to have. Why do we have a trend in bringing it back? I'm not sure. I don't understand. But when it comes to mouse acceleration, it's going to make your movement it's going to make your sensitivity uneven, right? And the, the upside of that is if you're a pro player who spends thousands of hours because it's his work, he can turn it into an advantage because he understands what he wants to achieve with his aim, right? He's going to be able to like understand his weaknesses. For example, his problem is uh, aiming up fast. And he wants to use the raw axle to change the acceleration of the sensitivity uh, of the vertical sensitivity to 
offset that weakness that he has because he has a specific goal in your in his mind. But if you're just gonna blindly control C, control F, row axle settings from a from from a player, I don't even know if Tens is using it. But if you just take set, Tens's settings, you're gonna get absolutely boned because you have absolutely no idea why on earth does he even have those settings on the raw acceleration in the first place so your body will be moving the mouse not knowing what to expect and it's not going to be tailored for yourself keep your if you're just a casual player keep it simple use your sensitivity that feels comfortable for you when environment is it has to be in my eyes a little bit more a little bit more uh, fast than in CS because of the old vertical movement and like flicks that you need to do against utility and so on. But for the love of God, don't use acceleration on the mouse if you're just a casual player. You're gonna wreck yourself. Like it's terrible. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the rant. Uh, it was a pleasure talking about this topic and, you know, See you guys around, leave a comment. If you have a topic you would like to see discussed, or like a tutorial or anything, leave it in the comment. Bye-bye.